Hey everybody, welcome to another DW Plays video. This is uh, the GBA version of Doom. Because I'm probably not going to do any other videos on the GBA version specifically, so why not do a DW Plays video? And more importantly, why not do a, a bit of a comparison between this and the PC version? Just so you can see uh, some of the changes they made. I didn't do that with Duke Nukem Total Meltdown, because, well, I didn't, didn't really think about doing it. But uh, suffice to say, Doom on GBA is just basic Doom. It's not Ultimate Doom, so it does not have the fourth episode. But I'm just going to go through E1M1 and E1M2 here and uh, show you what they're like. And then I'm going to switch over to the PC version just to give you some points of comparison there. Now, one thing you will notice immediately here is that there's four difficulty settings instead of five, and Ultra Violence is not one of them. That's because it's basically been rolled into the Nightmare difficulty here, so we're going to play it on Nightmare. Next thing you notice is the graphics are potato quality at best, and the music on this level is wrong. Very wrong. This is, uh, I mean, it's still Doom music, but it's not E1M1. It's not at Doom's Gate. Now, one thing I did notice that between this and the PC version is that enemies seem to be more accurate in this than the PC version. That could just be the fact that I'm taking a lot more damage in this, I don't know. But it seems like they're more accurate. It could also just be that the uh, frame rate is a lot more sluggish, as you can tell, even though they've reduced the graphics down so much. You'll also notice that there's some, uh, if you're familiar with the PC version, there's some level geometry missing there, and there's supposed to be a secret over here. <laughs> that is not there because uh, they didn't put it in the GBA version. Another thing you'll notice is that the corpses disappear after a very brief period and the blood is all green in this. The rating for this version was reduced down to T instead of M. Not that it really matters all that much, but uh, the, the visceral feeling of Doom is slightly reduced in this. But I mean, to, as, as a bit of a sacrifice to work decently on the, the GBA, it's not that big of a deal. Because I mean, if you wanted portable Doom prior to the Switch version, or prior to being able to do things like mod your PSP or your Nintendo DS or PS Vita or whatever, then... This was what you had, and that was it. And honestly, if this was all you had for Doom, or especially for portable Doom, then it's, it's actually not that bad. It's certainly not as, uh, as rough as trying to play through some of those console releases from back in the day. Because their frame rates were awful, their graphics were reduced heavily. I mean, sure, the graphics are reduced heavily in this, and the frame rate's pretty bad, too. But, this is more or less intact. They didn't really sacrifice the, uh, the look and feel of Doom too much for this. And I mean, the sacrifices they did have to make to get this working decently on the, uh, GBA are understandable. I mean, the GBA was not a powerful system at all. So, you do what you can with it. Here's another thing that they changed. The uh, save system is only at the end of levels, and you only get four slots. I will say that aiming at distant enemies is kind of a pain. Because they are barely visible. Now, it is worth noting that on the GBA screen, this isn't quite as atrocious to look at. Because what you're seeing in this video is upscaled to 1080p, which is uh, a bit of a cruel and unusual punishment for this particular game. But that's, you know, we, that's what we got. The things I do for video quality. 
Now, I did actually play all the way through this back in when I first got this. This was one of the first games I got for GBA, in fact. Um, this is another big change here is where this armor is located. In case you're wondering. And no, there's not any secret in here. You might be tempted to think there is, but no, there's not. They just change where the armor is placed for no discernible reason. And, um... Yeah, what was I saying? Oh. Some other things that, uh... You might notice about this version. Is that my movement seems kind of weird compared to what you'll see on the PC version. This is because I'm not as used to playing the GBA version. I did play all the way through it years and years and years ago. But... It's been a long time since then. <sighs> I'm getting old. At any rate, uh, to fill you in on what the controls are, D-pad will move you forward and backward as well as turn you left and right, which is pretty much what you would expect. The left and right shoulder buttons are your strafe buttons, for strafe left and strafe right, respectively. And then B button is your action button, as well as, if you hold it down, your sprint button. And then the A button is shoot. That's it. Well, DW, how do you switch weapons? Well, you hold the left and right shoulder buttons, and you press up and down on the D-pad. It's actually surprisingly intuitive, all things considered. Now, I would prefer... Obviously, being able to select the weapons that I want to use, number keys. But you don't get number keys on a uh, on GBA. You only have those uh, four buttons to work with and the D-pad, and technically the start button. But you know, whatever. Not a whole lot you can do with that. And then, then there's a select button as well, which does bring up the map. But it's. Uh, it's a uh, potato quality map, too. Actually, no, that's not even potato quality. That reminds me of... That reminds me of Atari 2600 right there. Oof. That's beyond potato quality. One of these days, I really need to get my, uh, my Atari 2600 hooked back up and do some Atari games on the channel, because uh, some of the games I have on that thing are just nuts. That armor bonus there real quick. For example, I have Raiders of the Lost Ark on that thing, and that game is a nightmare to play. You actually need two controllers to be able to play it. It's really weird. Chainsaw here. It even has the appropriate message. Find some meat. But, uh, we're not gonna use a chainsaw. There's no need to. Another thing you might notice is that the, uh, the fire rate of the chain gun is reduced compared to the PC version. It's not a major difference, but it is something that if you've played a lot of Doom, you will notice. played a lot of Doom over the years. Another interesting thing that this does compared to the PC version is that the PC version will let you, uh, uh, it doesn't let you continue on from the end of an episode. So you'll finish an episode, and then if you want to move on to the next one, you have to go back to the main menu and select the next episode, and you will pistol start it. In this version, you actually can continue from the previous episode. So, let's say you get to the end of E1, and you finish that level. It'll give you the, the text crawl. And then, you can just continue on from that, 
into E2, M1, with all the weapons and armor and health and everything that you had from the end of uh, E1, which is really cool. It makes that a lot easier to play. Which is, uh, admittedly, a bit... Extra, a bit of an extra bonus for trying to play through this thing. Because with this frame rate and these, uh... Very slightly wonky controls. It can be a bit rough trying to play through this thing. Now granted, it's a lot easier to play through this than it is to play through some of those old console versions, because the old console versions play like absolute garbage. But, uh... This on the other hand, well, if you wanted portable Doom, this was a decent enough option. This was one of the better ports. Obviously, there's there's better options now. I mean, you can mod your PSP, you can get it on the Switch, you can mod a DS or a 3DS or whatever, and just play ports of Doom on the, those, and they all work perfectly fine, and they can play the, the actual Ultimate Doom and all that. But uh, if you wanted portable Doom, back when the GBA was uh, still a thing, this is what you had, and it wasn't a bad option. So... It's E2, or E1M2, sorry. So, I'm going to go ahead and start E1M3, but I'm not actually going to go anywhere in it. Because now I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the PC version and give you some points of comparison. So give me a moment and I will switch over. Alright folks, here we are with PC version of Doom. Technically this is Ultimate Doom, so it has Episode 4 in here. Same game though, uh, we do have an extra difficulty setting here, which is Ultra Violence, which is my preferred way of playing Doom. And this is a uh, source port, so it does have some slight differences from what you would see in the uh, original DOS version. Namely, things like the uh, the widescreen resolution and uh, OpenGL rendering, which I don't really make much use of. I have it set to the, uh, the software rendering, because that's pretty much preserves the look of Doom. So, this is more or less just a... Uh, for convenience more than anything else. GZ Doom does enhance the engine somewhat. You are capable of doing more things with the GZ Doom than you are with uh, the basic Doom engine. And some people have made some very interesting things with that. I mean, we've had entire games release on it, and I'm, I've covered some of that on my channel. But not very much. Uh, I do plan on getting around to reviewing games like Head On or Headin. I don't know how you pronounce it, honestly. I think it's actually just Headin. Um, but that, there's the upcoming Salako, which is. If you looked at it, you would not believe it is on the Doom engine because its wildly enhanced capabilities are completely beyond anything you would see in this. But that's not the point. The point here is that I'm just showing you what it's like to play through the PC version compared to the GBA version. And you can see that it's more or less intact when you go to the, the GBA version. There are some slight differences here and there. Uh, the music is the biggest one. E1M1 is technically in the uh, the GBA version uh, at Doom's Gate, as the song is uh, actually known. It is actually in the GBA version. It's just much later on in the game. It's I think the the song for level 24, if I remember correctly. So it's it's there, but uh, it's it's not in the right spot, so to speak. Same with the music for this level. So, what you get with the Doom soundtrack in the GBA version is that it's the same tracks, it's just they've moved them all around for no discernible reason. But some of the other things that you'll notice, of course, things like this uh, enemy here that got jibbed instead of just falling over like in the GBA version. But all the level geometries here, obviously the frame rate is infinitely better on this version than it is on the, uh, the GBA. That armor is up here on this uh, shelf instead of, or platform, or console, whatever you want to call it. Instead of just on the floor, back in there. 
that secret's still there. And it does open this up. The messages you'll see whenever I find a secret, the, a secret is revealed with the sound effect is actually a GZ Doom thing. It's not in the original version. Like that right there. That's not technically in DOS. Um, so disregard that specific thing, but it's it's not that big of a deal, I don't think. It's really that we're looking at more of the, the bigger things that they changed between the PC version and the GBA version. Because you do notice them. And it's interesting just to see what they did to get it to run on that system as well as how well they were able to preserve the, the look and feel of Doom with such limited hardware. And if you wanted a portable version of Doom back in the early to mid 2000s that that was basically what you had and it's not a bad version I mean yeah the frame rate's not very good and the, the controls take some getting used to but it's got decent enough controls for what it is it's one of the relatively few first-person shooters for the GBA um, there's that there was Doom 2 there was Wolfenstein 3d um, Ballistic X versus Sever. Um, and I think there was maybe one or two more. I mean, there's Duke Nukem Advance. And I think there was maybe two more after that, but I can't remember what other first-person shooters were on it. One of these days, I need to find a copy of Duke Advance and, of course, X versus Sever and all that. Because... Honestly, portable first-person shooters are kind of interesting in and of themselves. I mean, I've been messing around with a PSP game fairly recently. And yeah, PSP for first-person shooters is kind of a terrible idea because it has that one analog, not even really a stick, more like a disc kind of thing. And it's not great, but I mean, they, they tried to make it work. <laughs> Medal of Honor Heroes is terrible, though, so uh, that'll be interesting when I get around to reviewing that. But there were actually a couple of uh, PSP first-person shooters. There was, uh, of course, the uh, Medal of Honor Heroes. There was co the Coded Arms games, you know, among other things. But anyway, point is, with, with Doom specifically, if you wanted portable Doom... Before you could do things like mod your PSP or your Nintendo DS, this was basically it. The GBA version was what you had, and if that's all you had, then it was perfectly acceptable. I mean, it's certainly a better port than some of the console versions, let's put it that way. Some of those console versions were just atrocious the terrible frame rates and the lowered resolutions and everything, and they, they just couldn't get it right. But the GBA version actually mostly got it right. It does a very good job of preserving the look and feel of Doom. I mean, sure, it makes some compromises, like this whole bit here with this cool elevator and the, the level geometry and everything. That's not even in the, uh, the GBA version at all. And sure, the music's not in the right spots, but it's it's a better soundtrack than the 32X version, let's put it that way. And, I mean, it's it's perfectly fine. It's it's not the best version available, but if it's what you had and it's you wanted a portable version of Doom, then it will definitely do the trick. These days, obviously, you can do more with things like the upcoming Steam Deck. You could just run a native version of Doom on that and it would be fine. And, of course, if you have dual analog sticks, you could do just about anything there, but uh, I mean, it, it, it's perfectly fine to play a, a GBA first-person shooter that plays kind of like Doom or Wolfenstein 3D. If it only takes place in the horizontal plane as far as movement and aiming goes, then it works fine. And when you start to try to introduce 3D elements to it, like looking up and down, then it gets really messy until you have dual analog sticks and a more powerful system. For example, uh, trying to play something like Quake on just a D-pad is a bit tricky. I mean, I played it with a keyboard back in the day. 
I actually did not use a uh, keyboard and mouse with that one until later on either. The first Quake game I used a keyboard and mouse on was actually Quake 2. But um, playing something like that with just a D-pad is kind of messy. But playing something like this with just a D-pad, it's fine. I mean, you, you saw in my uh, Duke Nukem Total Meltdown video, I had some trouble with that one. But I didn't really have much trouble playing the GBA Port of Doom here, other than just the frame rate and the slight sluggishness of the controls. But anything like that. Doom, Wolfenstein, uh, Blake Stone, Rise of the Triad, any of that sort of thing would technically be perfectly fine to play on a, a gamepad or especially even a, a D-pad and nothing else. As long as you had buttons to strafe and buttons to shoot and interact with, you'd basically be fine playing that. So, if you find a copy of Doom for the GBA on your local bargain bin shelf sometime and you think, you know what, maybe I should give that a try, go for it. It's Doom. It plays fine, for the most part. I wouldn't go for it as my first choice, but if you just want something to play with your GBA, then go for it. At any rate, folks, that's another DW Plays Down, and uh, I'll see you all in the next video.